second attempt. Okay, you ready? I'm probably, yeah? Okay, so good morning everyone. I hope everyone's awake. What this presentation is about is what's my name or more importantly, what's your name? Not really that much about Joomla. So what's really, what, what does it matter? Well, we all build websites and on almost every website that we build, we need to collect the visitors' names. How we need to collect them and what we're collecting them for will be different. This is Yahoo, so as you can see on Yahoo, they ask when you sign up, they ask you for your first name and your surname. Google asks you for your first and your last name. This is a booking.com, it's a hotel reservation system, and they ask for your title, your first name, and your last name. Vimeo just has one field for your first and last name. Uh, Eventbrite, which is what we use for this event, they had separate fields again for first name and last name. And this is Facebook. And again, it asks for your first name and surname. So you're thinking, so what? Yeah, what does this matter to me? Well, if you go to Facebook, you might see a module like this. Module, Facebook, it's written in Joomla. Um, you might see a bit like this, and it says Brian likes. Because Facebook needs to know what your name is, because they want to personalize the web experience for you. So if they want to personalize the web experience, they've not only got to find out my name, but which part of my name is the personal part. How, what is the best way to call me? If you're not doing something social, you might be doing a more business site. This is a directory of my local university. And we can see here Dr. Subhajit Bas Basu, FRSA. So in his case, it's important not only for, for us to write that he's a doctor, but also to write that he's got um, some sort of qualification called an FRSA, whereas the person above it is Mr. Adam Baker. So he's just an ordinary guy. Yeah? He's got no special qualifications. He's got a better title than Dr. Sub Sub Subhajit Basu, but he's not that important. He's not got the same qualifications. And we can also see here on this one, this, these people thought it was relevant to write Ms. or Mrs. So if if that's not common in your, in your country, Mrs. is the typical one we use for your, a married woman. And Ms. or MS is, often, is the one, I don't think it's relevant for you to know whether I'm married or I'm single. It usually gives it a clue because they've put something different. But you know, that, that's a, a neutral thing that some places do. So we need to know, for lots of different reasons, what is the name of our site visitor. So what we're going to do now is going to have a look at a few people around the world and ask you what is their name. So the first one, does anyone know who this is? Bjork. Bjork. Okay, so a singer from Iceland. Her real name is Bjork Goodman's daughter. I'm going to apologize right now if I get some pronunciations wrong. I will do my best. I have practice, but I'll do my best. So in Iceland, Bjork, the first part, is her given name. The second part, Goodman's daughter, Goodmund, is her father's name. Yeah? A daughter, as you can guess, just means is the daughter of. So the name is actually unique to her. Yeah? There is no one in, there's nobody else in her family that's going to have the same combination. Her brothers have got it's Goodman's son. Yeah? It's all very different. But in Iceland as well, you would call her either Bjork, just on its own, or Bjork Goodman's daughter. So a lot of people in Iceland, they only use the given name. The family name is not used at all. But when you look in a directory like the telephone book, she's listed under B for Bjork, not under G for Goodman's daughter. So if on your web form, I'm going to keep it in the top right-hand corner of first name and last name box, if you're asking for first name and last name, how do you normally sort things on your website? Yeah? A lot of people will sort their names by the last name. But for people in Iceland, she's not going to look under G for her name. She's going to look under B. Yeah, so it's really important that you know the location and the culture and everything. So who's this person? Mao, Chairman Mao, or Mao Zedong. 
So what is his name made up of? Well, the first part, Mao, is his family name. That's already different. We've got the family name first. Dung is his given name. And Zay is a generational name. Okay, that's a unique thing in, in the region of China. So his sisters were Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong, and Mao Zedong. Yeah, so the Ze is just a, a sig it's an indicator of their generation. It's not part of their family name. Yeah? It's not, their parents do not have Ze because it's a different generation. Their children do not have Ze. But it is part of their name. It's about what makes them up. And what do you call Mao Zedong? Well, you either call him Mao Zedong Shen, which is the polite part of it, the Shen Cheng, or just Zedong Shen. Yeah? So it's the generational name, the middle bit, is always there. So even though it's not part of the family name, it's just a generational indicator, that's always there. So again, look at the top box. I had first name, a middle bit. Yeah? Sometimes and a last name. If you're going to sort, and if he wrote Zay in the middle, because it's a middle field, it's going to get missed out, because you don't need that bit as much, do you? It's only the extra bit. No, it's an important part of his name. Well, so a lot of people in China, what they do if they come into the West, because they know that people get confused by family name, given name, they might change the order of it to match what we do in the West. So they might write their name as Yao Ming, as Yao Ming and they might add an English type word name as well. So they might call themselves, when they come to America, Fred Yao Ming. Of course, he could call himself Fred Ming Yao and keep the family name, generational name in the right order. So that's going to get really confusing because two people from China, two brothers, yeah, could come and they could choose, one could choose to do Yao Ming because that makes it the Western way. And the other one says, no, 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 I'll, give, I'll add Fred for you, but I'm going to keep it in the right order. And we can't guess from those. They don't sound, we, you know, there's no sounding there to indicate which is a last and which is a first, which is a family and which is a personal name. Does anyone know who this is? Hung from Jumlat. So Hung, Hung Din. So Hung is, in, is Vietnamese. So I asked him, I said, Hung, what is your family name? And, that's the f and which is your given name? Yeah, because I don't recognize those. They're not, like, they're not typical British English family names. Yeah? But it's kind of like Chinese. So it could have been, or it sounds to me like Chinese. So it could have been, I could assume, oh, it's family name first. But it's not. It's given name and family name. So then I asked it, Hung, what's the correct way to call you? Yeah, what's the polite? And he said, well, you can call me Mr. Hung. I said, OK. He said, then he said, but you can call me Mr. Din as well, or Hung, or Din. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Yeah? So, Okay, I'm getting a little bit confused now. It's all very different already with different places. So th this is now, and unfortunately, I've got the Spanish speakers in the room, so <laughs> um, I have to attempt a pronunciation. And uh, this is Maria Jose Jareno Quinones, which I hope that was right. And Maria Jose is the given name. Jareno is the family name coming from the father. Yeah, as you can see here, the father was Antonio Jareno Rodriguez. And Quinones is the family name from the mother. Yeah, so it's her mother's father's name. And it, the two join together. Uh, and the order is paternal, maternal. So the father's name and the mother's name. Um, Portuguese names, just to make it a little bit more confusing, they tend to go maternal, paternal. So they look the same to me, but they're the other way around. Um, and that starts to, sometimes they add a joining word in between just to show that it's the two parts of the name. But you would call her Senorita Carena, the middle one, the father's name. So again, first name, three fields, first, something, last. Where does she put that in? A lot of Spanish speakers, when they're in more anglicized speaking countries, they'll put a dash between the two parts of their name just to join it so, it so that you know that all of it is the family name. That's not 
it isn't how they write it, but they'll do it to make it easier to avoid the confusions. And of course, if you're Portuguese, you might do huge generations of names. You know, there might be f mothers, fathers, grandparents, whatever, all in there as well. So who's this guy? Boris Yeltsin. It's very difficult find, googling, googling for Boris Yeltsin and finding a picture of him not drunk. <laughs> and also one that wasn't photoshopped to add even more bottles and things. So his name is Boris Nikolaevich Yeltsin. Boris is his given name. Nikolaevich, Nik, the Nikolai bit is his father's name. The Evich means son of. And Yeltsin is his family name. So he's got part of it is a given name, part of it is as a generational thing, showing that he is the son of Nikolai, and then Yeltsin. But his wife is Naina Yosefina Yeltsina. So Naina, the daughter of Joseph, Yosefna, Yeltsina, not Yeltsin. Because given name, family name, father's name, family name, and then a masculine ending to say son of uh, Nikolai and then Yeltsin, but she has daughter of Joseph and Yeltsina. So even the family name has a gender. So you can't, if you're got doing a, a booking at a hotel, Mr. Yeltsin, President Yeltsin books a room and he's sharing a room with somebody of a different name. Yeah, well, what's going on there? But no, that's the normal thing in Russian to have a female gender on the name. Who's this guy? <laughs> Nicholas Dinosopoulos. I've had years of practice at this now. Okay, so what's, and that's how Nicholas writes his family name in Greek characters. Yeah, but that actually could be pronounced, just clearly pronounced as. Theonisopoulos. The. Okay? But that also could be written like that. Actually, this is how Nicholas writes it. So, how does Nicholas take his Greek characters and know the correct way to spell it in English? Is there a correct way to spell it in Latin characters? Well, yeah, there is a standard. It's called an Elot standard which is a Greek, there's an ISO standard. We have lots of ISO standards for measurements and all sorts of other things. And then the Greeks, being Greeks, didn't quite like the Latinization of the standards, so they've adjusted it a little bit. But it does mean that, in theory, everyone in Greece can find out how to write their own name in Latin characters. Because it doesn't mean to say that they all do it that way, but in theory, there's a standard. This guy. The first three characters there, okay, this is Japanese. The first three characters are the family name, and the second two characters are the given name. Now, the problem with Japanese characters is you can actually pronounce the same characters different ways. So, this guy could be, could be called Tokairin Kenzo. Uh, he could also be called Shoji Kenzo. So two completely different sounds, we're not like talking accents, we're talking completely different sounds, can come from the same spelling. I just add a little bit of complexity. And we've got these, th then we can actually go a little bit further, and different characters can produce the same sound. So all of those are shoji-san. Yeah, all of them. So we can't, from Japanese, there's real ambiguity. Japanese as well uh, takes it a little bit further, because they have a huge character set. Yeah, a lot of, there's thousands and thousands of characters in the Japanese language. But a lot of those are not really used anymore, especially now that we have things like computers and stuff. They have to standardize to some parts. But you might choose, if your family for a thousand years has always written your name with one character, you're going to keep using it until you get to electronic stuff and that character doesn't exist anymore and things, so you have to change your name for digital use. So Japanese gets really ambi ambigu ambiguous. Okay, what's my name? Hey, well, my name is Brian Guy Joseph Tiemann. That's the name my parents gave me. 
Brian is my given name. Guy and Joseph are my extra given names. And Timon is my family name. Now, I sometimes write it as Brian G. J. Timon. And regularly, I get forms like bank forms or booking forms, and it's written like this. First name, initial, last name. The problem with that is it's not that common, at least in England, to have two middle names. So that field in the middle only allows me to put one character. So on my bank, I am Brian G. Teeman. On my passport, though, of course, it allows the full thing. I'm Brian Guy Joseph Teeman. Now, that becomes a little bit difficult for me. If I have to go and prove who I am to the bank for any reason, you take your passport, your national identity papers. And my name does not match the one on my bank. Yeah, So that gets a little bit confusing. Um, Who's this guy? J.R. Ewing. Yeah? And J that's quite a common thing in the USA to just use initials. So his name is initial, initial, last name. So look in the top right again. You've got the three fields. How does he write his name? J. R. Ewing. Then Facebook is going to go J. Likes. Yeah, but it's not. It's JR. So he has to write J dot R dot in the first field. Yeah? Um, quite a lot of forms do form validation. And a lot of name ones do form validation only allow you to use the letters A to Z or A to Z. So what does he do? He, his name suddenly becomes Jura. There's no dots there. Does anybody know who this guy is? Okay, this is J. Edgar Hoover. Now, again, it's really common. His name is J. Edgar. That's how everybody calls him. Initial, what would be his middle name, and then his family name. But again, he's only ever known as J. Edgar. Not, not J and not Edgar. He uses both as his given name. How does that fit in with the form that you're doing? Initial, first name, last name. Gets confusing. What's this guy's name? Okay. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, the blank, bl <laughs> blank slide. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, so Peter van Westen is Dutch. He lives here in the Netherlands. What is his name? Well, his name is first name, insertion is the translation, last name, Tussenvogsel. And I apologize if I got that pronunciation completely wrong. Yeah, and it, it means, the, it's like a joining word. Yeah, that goes in the middle. It's part of his family, his last name, but it's also separate from it. So his name is not Peter, and then Van Westen as a joint bit, but it's also not Peter Weston. Yeah? It is complex under Dutch rules. Now, you would actually call him, I don't know, how do you pronounce that first word? Meneer? Okay, Meneer Van Westen, or you'd call him Peter Van Westen. You would never say Peter Weston. Okay? And you would, but where would you sort him in an order under the W? So you write Van West, Mr. Van Westen, <coughs> but you store it under the W. Now it gets a little bit complicated as well. It's a little bit smaller font, but when you write Meneer, the V of Van is capital. But when you write Peter Van Westen, the V is not. Now not too far from here, just a few hundred kilometers or so, is Belgium. Belgium use names very, very similar. They have this joining word as well. But all the rules are the opposite, yeah, just to be awkward. And you do the, cap the capitals when, it is, when, in, when the Netherlands, they capitalize it. In Belgium, they don't, yes? OK, is that the whole of Belgium or just the Flemish, French? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it looks the same. The Dutch name and the Belgian name look the same, but one's going to be filed, filed under V, and one's going to be filed under W. Okay, Mister. Yeah. So it, is this getting confusing for you now? Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting the fact that working out what someone's name is is actually quite a complex thing to do? Um, and then this is the, I think it was a travel site, yeah, in the Netherlands, and you can see you can see here. Well, first of all, it asks for the introductory letters. So, Mr. Doctor, Professor. No. 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 Yeah, the oh, the J. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then the first name, the 
to St. Vauxhall? It was, I was close enough. <laughs> and then to the middle bit and the last bit. Yeah? Um, I've, you can also see the little red star for the required fields. Yeah, and you can see the Tussen Vauxhall. Tussen is not always, not everybody in the Netherlands or in Belgium has one of those, but when you do have it, it's really important to write it down and to write it down for them separately to the last name. Now, this guy is called Issa bin Osman. He's a Malaysian. Issa is his given name. Bin means son of. And Osman is the father's name. But you'd call him Mr. Issa or Enchik. Did I say that right? Issa, yeah? Enchik Issa, which is more like the local, you know, polite part. So, family name bit, for me, the closest bit, I would guess, would be the Osman or Bin Osman. But when you say, but you don't use that when you speak to him. You just say Mr. Issa. It gets a little bit complicated now with his wife, Zaytan or Zaytan, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, because she becomes either Mrs. Zaytan or Mrs. Issa. Yeah? It's a bit like in, Eng in England, quite, you know, traditionally when you would get, um, you, the, the, a woman will take her husband's family name. Yeah, so my mother became Mrs. Shirley Teeman. But actually, in, a lot of, in the older generation, her name became Mrs. Ronald Teeman. Ronald is my father, that was her formal name. She actually lost every part of her name. Yeah? Just, you know, completely adopted her husband's name. And you can see here it could be either way, but always with the given name part. Um, this is a Spanish name. And so when Manuel marries Maria, yeah, I'm not going to attempt to do the, the full bit, and they have children, Pedro and Encarna. Did I say that right, do you think? Right? And you can see that they take, because remember it was father's ne father from the father from the mother, so it becomes Pedro Perez from the father, Padilla, the father's part of the mother's name. So that now they're booking a hotel reservation. Not only are the man and the woman in the hotel got different family names, but then they've got these other kids with them, and they've got completely different names. So what is going on here? It gets very confusing. Um, this name, V.S. Achutanandan. Okay, this is a name from Kerala in the south of India. Now I look at that and I'm going to say that that's Mr. You know, v, uh, v. Victor Simon, and then the last bit being the family name. Um, actually, no, this is his name. Yeah, and. The first part was the family name. The next part was the father's name. And then there was his given name. Yeah? But he would quite, so V.S. Achananandan is not B.G.J. Tiemann. Yeah? It's family name, father name, given name. So it's the given name right at the end. So obviously the given name there is more important. Um, this is another Indian name, um, beginning with the village then the father's name, then the given name, and then something called a last name. Yeah. Um, another, another one, this is a Rajasthani uh, name in India. Uh, given name, father's name, surname, caste name. Yeah. So caste like a generational cultural tribe type thing. And then finally, another Indian one, town, given, caste. Okay, this is getting a bit complicated. Yeah? It's the new name of the rules? Yep. Or, or could do. It depends. Yeah? The rules are a little bit vague, uh, but, you can s but also you can see because there are g there's a generational bit in their father, it's, uh, the, you know, parents and children are going to get different names. If they've moved, as you said, they might get different names. The cast is never going to change. That will, that's hereditary. Uh, but you can't tell from that, on that first one, you can't tell at all. It looks like the way someone in J.R. Ewing was written, yeah? but it's completely different. Yeah? It's the other way around. Um, then we get on to Arabic names. Uh, this little boy is called Mohammed, which is his given name. Al-Jamil, the beautiful. 
Ibn Nidal, son of Nidal, Ibn Abdulaziz, the son of Abdulaziz, so it's his, the father's name and the grandfather's name, Al Filistini, the Palestinian. But his name could change over time. He's got a little bit older, and his name goes from Muhammad al Jamil ibn Nidal ibn Abdul Aziz al Filistini to Abu Karim Muhammad, the father of Karim, because he's had sons. <laughs> now, now I'm assuming, I, I, couldn't, I didn't find it, but I'm assuming if he has lots of sons, it's always just the father of the first one. Yeah, but because so, that would get really confusing if it's father, father of John, father of Simon, you know, all different. But again, that's, so that his name is going to change over time. So obviously his official documentation has to change over time. He has to be able to go and change his documentation. If it's your website and you're storing his name for whatever reason, you've got to give someone the option to change their name. Yeah? That's not something we often do. Change your password. Yeah, change your email. Yeah, we do that, but change your name? Do you allow that on your sites? Quite often not. Who's this guy? Pele. Actually, no, his name is Edison Arantes de Nascimento. Yeah, Port it's a Portuguese name, but he is known as Pele. Yeah, if you actually look at the Brazilian football team, they've all got names like Pele and you know, those things. None of those are part of anywhere part of his real official name. They're a nickname. Yeah, we just use those to make it easier. Who's this guy? OK, is it? Because Victor Drover's actually a doctor. He's also got a PhD certificate. And he used to be a professor. And it would depend, in the general world, the fact that he's a doctor, formerly a professor with a PhD, is irrelevant. It has no, it has no relevance to what he does now in, in Joomla. So he typically just writes his name as Victor Drover. But when he was a scientist, it would be often written as doctor because it was important yeah, to show that he was not just an ordinary lecturer. So, but that doctor could have been either with, whoops, with the doctor at the beginning or the PhD letters at the end. Yeah, just to remove the thing, he's not going to be able to cure you if you've broken your foot. You know, he's a, he's a PhD a scientist, not a medical doctor. So sometimes he would write it like that. And sometimes when he was just in his teaching role, he used the word professor. But it was really important within that workplace to use one of those titles. That was part of his name. Yeah? But he tends not to use them anymore because it's not relevant to his Joomla life. Who's this guy? Beat. Beat. Yeah? Or Beat, as it reads to me in English. And it took me like three year, four years of knowing him before I knew that I was saying it wrong. Um, that's just a first name. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's no family name there, nothing. That really confuses stuff. Yeah, quite often when I see when he registers for events that I'm running, he puts a B as a family name. Because you've got to put something in there, so he puts Beat B. Yeah, I have a friend of mine um, who changed his name to Wookie. You know, the furry character from uh, one of the Star Wars things? He changed it. Re really, his name is Wookie. It's not like Pele, where it's a nickname. His name is Wookie. So not only has he got to convince the bank to give him a checkbook and a credit card that says <laughs> Wookie, he had to convince them that it's just one word. It's not a first name. It's not a last name. It's just Wookie. Yeah? Um, I don't know how Bayat deals with it. Yeah? But it's just a single name. Um, I've done that one. Okay, so what do you do? Yeah, as website builders or as advisors to clients, yeah, what do we do about the name? How do we resolve these issues? Yeah, how do we get rid of problems? Well, there's a couple of things we do. We can do. Right, the first thing is, do you actually need to split somebody's name up into different parts? Yeah, so you just ask one field, what is your name? Yeah, if you look at the Joomla user registration thing, it just says, what's your name? Yeah, it's a single field. It lets you put in there whatever you want. So you can decide for yourself, do, is it relevant for the website you are building, for the service you are offering, to separate the names? Does it have a meaning? Yeah? And you're letting the user decide how they can write their name. You're not forcing them to 
do silly things like put part of their name without with a dash in because you only allow one one character at the end for your family or forcing them to put a B in there because you have to have two fields. Yeah, You're letting the user decide, so that might work for you. If you're going to do that, make sure those input fields are long enough for someone's name. Yeah, if you've got, I mean, I, even, even I have it, if, I, if it says to me, what is your full name, I will write Brian Guy Joseph Tiemann until I get to the end and there's no space. Even on um, the, quite often, you know the form that you get on the aeroplane with the little boxes and you're supposed to put your name in, you know, for customs? Yeah, my name's not that long and a lot of countries it still doesn't fit. Yeah, and it's really annoying because, of course, you only know it doesn't fit when you get to the end. So if you, but if you're going to split, how are you going to do it? First of all, I said make them optional. Yeah, you can't have all those fields as being required because if they're all required, somebody who's not got the, diff <coughs> the different parts is going to be in problems. You might need to think of a way of making, of maybe some with some JavaScript or something of having, you've got to have something but in one of them, and I don't care which one. You might need to think about that. Um, try to avoid using the words first name and last name. Because as we've seen, the first is not necessarily the personal, and the last isn't necessarily the family. Yeah. So uh, try to avoid using those labels. If you're going to do a, lang um, a form specifically for a region, like that Dutch tra travel site, yeah, you can actually use the correct words for that locality and that culture. Um, if you're going to need to do sorting on it to do a directory or something, maybe consider having a third field with a drop-down select box saying, which of these fields do you want me to sort by? Because we can't guess. Yeah? I think it's really confusing if Bjork, who wants to be done under a B, Bjork Goodman's daughter, she goes to America, and she goes, I know if I write Bjork Goodman's daughter, I'm going to appear under G in the list. So she'll change her name on the form to Goodman's daughter Bjork, yeah, so that the sorting will be correct, but that's not her name. Now, we can guess from the name you know, um, that it's which part might be a bit, but Fred Yao Ming, Fred Ming Yao, I haven't got a clue which not, but all of those sound different to me, so I've got no clue that it's been changed around. So consider asking for um, the name for sorting and let the user decide that. Um, if you're going to have titles, yeah, maybe Mr, Mrs, Doctor, Professor, really think, is that necessary? Yeah, Because if you're going to offer as a drop-down selector box, where do you stop? Yeah, I've been, I mean, that might be great, but it didn't have the Miz that I saw there, that I saw at the beginning, and it doesn't have lots of other titles that people use. But the title is really important in some places. So like for Victor, when he was working, when he's wor when he was working as a research scientist, it was relevant to put doctor or PhD or professor. Sometimes in other cultures it's really important. In Germany, yeah, it's really, you know, a lot of people use their degree letters that are always written there, or they, if they've got a doctorate or PhD, it'll always be there. It's important to, seek to show that, even if it may not have an obvious sig significance. So think about where you're going to be. Maybe don't do it as a drop-down box. Yeah, let, them, let the user decide, but let them do what they want. You might also, of course, need to look at whether that should be <coughs> a, pr a, uh, a title before the name and a title after. Yeah? Because it's Dr. Victor Drover, PhD. Yeah? So maybe think about offering it as a field to go at the beginning, a field to go at the end, maybe have both. You're going to need to think about what it is for your site and your user. The other option to do, um, if you just have a single field that says, write your full name, is, and what should we call you? So that's like the Pele example. Yeah? Give me your full name and tell me what I should call you. Um, I know 
that gets around the assuming which part of the name is the personalized na name, because we can't guess by the order. It's different in every culture. As I said, with Pele, it's not even part of his full name. The, um, I was, spoke at a conference, and they put this on the, their registration form. Yeah, what's your full name? What do we want? What should you call us? Well, you know, what should I call you? A lot of people got very confused when they saw that. It's not a field that you often see, and they wrote sir. Yeah, God, dear. <laughs> yeah, uh, what should we call you, dear, dear Brian? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So um, if you're going to do something like that, because that's kind of a new idea, you might need to put some text in there saying, for example, when we send you a name, uh, an email, what should we put? Or when it's, if it's like the Facebook example, it says, Brian likes. Is that relevant? Yeah. Um, even with just like Latin, um, English countries, we use our names differently. When I went to school, at my school, which was a very, um, very posh English private school, my name was not Brian, my name was Timon. Timon, come here. Timon, where's your homework? Yeah? I went to school with these guys from the age of 8 to 18. I don't know their given names because we only used our surnames. And that's fine. Now, I've noticed quite a few Americans, uh, people from North America, will say, hey, Timon. I find that incredibly rude. Yeah? Really, really annoys me. Yeah? So you need to, it, even in those countries, it's different. Also, what happens when somebody calls you, when a salesperson calls you on the telephone, yeah, and they go, hello, Brian. Oh, sorry, do I know you? To me, you would never do that. It's hello, Mr. Teeman, yeah, until you've met me and introduced me. Yeah? If you say hello, Brian, that, that phone's going down. Yeah? It's hello, Mr. Teeman, until I say call me Brian. Obviously, in the general world, it's a little bit different, but you know, um, you know, you could, you can just call me God. Um, so it, it is very different, yeah. Um, I know, but at the same time, if someone calls up and says uh, on the tele, you know, the telephone, and says, "Hello, is Mr. Teeman there?" and I'm, I go looking for my dad. Yeah. So at the same time as I don't want a salesperson to ring up and say, "Hello, can I speak to Brian?" I also don't want them to say, hello, can I speak to Mr. Teeman? So I'm quite happy if you use both parts, Mr. Brian Teeman. Uh, but it's confusing, different in different places. So it's quite useful, I think, to add that extra field, what should we call you? Um, and I so said the different purpose. Now, what about the rules that you have yeah, for validating those names? Well, the first one is don't capitalize the name. Yeah, a lot of forms on submit will capitalize it. Yeah, make the first letter a capital. That can get really confusing. You should do it as it's entered. Because there are cultural differences about where you put a capital and where you don't. We saw that with Peter Van Westen. I can't assume that the V for Van is a capital, because sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. It depends how I write it. Um, so leave that up to the user how they do that. Don't restrict it to just alphabetical characters. Yeah. People put dashes in their names. People put spaces in there. People put periods in there. Put periods in there. Yeah, don't restrict it. I don't know of anyone that puts numbers in their name, but I mean, it might happen in some place. I haven't looked at the naming culture of everywhere around the world. Also, don't restrict it to ASCII 128. Yeah, and I'm, look, I'm glad you're in the room, Ruben, because I had to actually check to see uh, what's the character in yours? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I had to look up where was, uh, that rule was there for you because I, you know, I've, no, I've seen it. How do I write Reuven's family name? Yeah, because that's not a character that exists on this keyboard, or at least not printed. Yeah. I had yeah. And and you know, so it, it's wrong if you're collecting someone's name to force them to write it using characters that are not part of your name. Yeah, if it was me, I would get offended. So um, I don't know. I don't know whether, you know whether you're just used to it or whether you get annoyed or or what. But you know, think think about think about that. Make sure you allow the extended characters and also obviously accents. Yeah, English. We don't use any accents on letters. Yeah, obviously a lot of other countries do. Uh, so allow that. And as I said before, don't make all the fields required. 
Uh, you should also consider that a lot of forms of notes have a maximum or minimum character count. Now, you can't have a family name of one character. Uh, yes, you can. You know, don't apply those rules because you don't know everyone's family name structure. Um, if you only want to get Latin characters, you should say so on the form. Um, in Nicholas being a, would be a good example. You write your name in Greek characters or in Latin characters. I'm assuming that whenever you come to, let's say, a Joomla event, an international event, you always just by default write it in English in Latin characters. Yeah. Okay. On the booking form for Joomla Day in Greece, by default, which character set would you use? Because it's using a US site, they have to use the Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the entire website's in Greek. Okay, right, so that, you know, it's getting confusing now, isn't it? So, you know, um, if you only want it to be A to Z and, or with no accents, make sure you actually say so. Yeah, don't, ex don't expect a user to spend ages trying to get those other characters on their keyboard to work if you're not going to let them work. Um, quite often, you actually might do, what you might do is ask you to write your name in your alphabet. Um, so if... Jumbo Day Greece, they're presumably going to print a name badge out, Nicholas. No, oh, you don't bother. But OK, all right. Of OK, so this is the problem, because you would want the name written in the Greek characters, yeah? But we actually need it in a Latin transcription as well for the other parts of the website. So which is a prime example. They, they could have added an extra field, yeah, which says, I need to use your name for our back office system in English characters. But we also know we need to print a badge for you in Greek characters. So consider offering the two different types of fields. Yeah. Um, that, so if you want to do that, you might ask for a transcription just using Latin character set. Um, that's the end of this presentation. I want to say thank you to this guy, Richard Ishida. Uh, Richard Ishida is the lead of the W3C multilingual, multinational efforts. Yeah, he's the guy in charge of it. He's the one that's doing it. And his, he says he's trying to make the World Wide Web worldwide. So you know, this, this presentation is based on um, a document that he's written. Um, and that's the URL where the entire presentation, the, with all the history of the names, obviously without the Joomla names, um, <laughs> exists, um, where some of his recommendations are. Um, there's also on that list, there is a if you go to the bottom and click on the, I think it's like comments or something, it takes you to another page. And there's loads more examples on there of how to deal with the names. There's one really good example on there from a church group in America. Um, saying some of the issues they've had about names yeah, for their church group. And I was like, I thought, well, that's interesting because Ameri you know, American names, how are they changing? Well, you know, we need to be able to not have, it's important to us to know in our system if this is a, married man and woman but not everybody is used is it not every woman is adopting the man's name so we had to change our system to do that yeah we had to change up we had it was really important to us to know if they were married so we had to put a mrs field you know for that but we don't know that a lot of people don't want to use that title so we had to have a field that just said are you married yeah are you single but then they, then they realized, yes, you're married, but your partner is not um, uh, a member of the church. Yeah? Or in my case, my girlfriend is legally married, uh, not to me. So the question is, are you married? Yes. Can you make an assumption that she is married to me just because we're sharing a hotel bedroom? No. Yeah? So it all gets very complicated. I mean, there's some good examples there. And if it's something that you've found interesting, or it's, re it, it's put some challenges to you, consider having a look and taking part in that discussion, because it is something that's actually quite interesting. It blew my mind when I first read about it. Um, and thanks very much. I mean, if you've got any questions. Just out of curiosity, if some African name would go to click in the name, do you know, do you know how that's written? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it really, again, it's going to really differ. You know, and some of them do like huge generational things. Um, I know, um, like I lived in Israel for a year, so I had to write my name in Hebrew characters. And uh, we don't have the uh, Israel doesn't have a standard.
like the Greeks have for doing the transliteration. Um, it just became very difficult because normally you would just say, oh, there's somebody else with that name already. So they've grabbed the spelling. Yeah? <laughs> they've defined how it's spelled. You'd look in the book and you'd look at tar. And you go, oh, okay, that's how I spell it. Uh, there ain't no one using my name. So it was every, everybody, whenever they wrote my name, had to guess. Yeah? And it, in a country that doesn't write vowels, that only uses consonants, um, there's uh, lots of different ways of doing T. Yeah? And T man, it could be like four characters, five characters, three characters. Um, so it, 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 it's guessing and standards. So it, it starts to become tricky. Um, Joomla's quite, I quite like the fact that Joomla's by default just has a single field. Yeah. I mean, I would hate the fact that, I mean, I hate the fact that I can't, if I, if I can't use the name that I want to use. If it asks for my name and I can't put my full name, it really annoys me. Adding, adding a display name field would be Or a sort name sort field. Name. You know, you've got to be able to do that. You know, so you need so, to... So But she does need to find a name when she's living in Iceland. Everybody else, you know, but, but, but she's using an all. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you'd always want the story to be in the place where it, it's Yes, that's absolutely. That's a valid thing. It's a bit like the same as the character set. I need your I need your name in English characters for my back office, mm -hmm. but I'm going to display it in whatever characters you want. It's how you're going to use the name is matters as well as, because that's the, the easy way, of course, is, is just to have the single field and let someone, is just to have the single field and let someone write in what they want. Yeah? But then it's what are you going to do with the name that's going to affect how you're going to do it. Um, and one, I mean, one, just one observation. Um, every J and Beyond, and also for the Joomla World Conference, when we ask for your first name and last name, I think we've used Eventbrite and we've used custom forms, so it's the same. Uh, you get a lot of people who just type very quickly, so there's no capitalization at all. But I've also noticed that several French people have always written their family name as capitals, the entire part. Yeah? So obviously, you know, it's not something I've come across before, but it's, it's I've been a few people. So it's obviously a common thing to do, to write your name all in capitals. It looks wrong to me. And in the past, I would have gone through, especially if I was going to display the name, and change it to just the cap first capital letter. Um, I didn't do this time, partly because I was lazy, partly because I thought, hmm, maybe there's a reason that you do that. So is it a rumor that the name is still going to be the same? So Louis is going to be your name, or is it different? Yeah, no, that gets through, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so yes, the fourth. Yes, sorry, yes, you're right. Yeah, I was, I was saying, I was thinking numerals within the, the string of of, of alphabet. Right. In, in but yes, you're absolutely right. Use the Roman numerals, so it's letters. Okay, but that's they're using the Roman numerals because people have got a restriction on you only using A to Z letters, quite often. Well, even old stuff before you were into computers. And okay. So it, it, it gets very complicated. It's not, it's one of those things, you know, oh, do I really want to ask somebody for their name? <laughs> um, anyway, um, thanks very much. I hope that's given you something to, something to uh, think about. And I believe it's coffee time now.